Welcome back to another watch review by Todd's Watch Shop. As always, please click the like and subscribe for more videos like these. Finally, if you have any additional reviews that you would like to see done, please leave a comment below. All right, so normally I don't do unboxings, but I just received this watch in the mail and figured why not. I'm pretty sure this is a watch. Uh, I have a few things coming in the mail, but I'm fairly certain this is going to be the Wenger Swiss Army Classic Executive GMT model 793067. If not, then this video is probably going to get a little bit weird and uh, then you probably won't see it. So we'll see. All right. I've already ripped off the label because, you know, there's creepy people on the internet and I don't need anybody following me um, because I left my address on there. So we'll see. Pretty much kind of know what I'm expecting. Uh, it was a very nice watch. Um, I, I couldn't help it. I just started buying and God forbid there's like three watches coming. Yep, it's exactly as I thought. Okay, it's actually very nice. Man, I like that. So, real quick, one of the first things you'll notice, this watch is brand new. It's never been worn. Um, this, this box, this display box is actually quite common. Um... This is what you would get if you were to purchase the watch either on the internet or uh, in a department store. But usually if you go to a certified watch shop, you will typically get uh, one of the much nicer boxes. This is the newer, this box is the newer version to this one, which I think you guys have seen before. This is the, the old uh, Wenger watches. They still have these. But this is the new version of that. Let me go ahead and open it up. And I'm not going to take the watch out yet. But uh, it's quite nice. Man, look at that. I really like that. All right, before I get too ahead of myself, let me give a two-minute brief history of Wenger. And once again, this is the Wenger Classic Executive. Technically pronounced Wenger. The company dates back to the late 1800s. The company got its start in Switzerland in the canton of Jura. This region is overlooked by the Jura Mountains and famous for a number of watchmakers whose names are too many to list. The company's first line of products include industrial cutlery and butcher equipment. Technically known as Paul Bouchet and C, the company would become known as Wenger after Theodore Wenger, a minister who'd served in the U.S. military, returned to Switzerland and joined Paul Bouchet. They quickly worked to produce a new pocket knife supporting a government contract for the Swiss Army. This contract was split with the company Victorinox, thus beginning the long relationship with the company. For nearly 80 years, Victorinox and Wenger both produced Swiss Army knives. Wenger began production of watches in 1988, a year earlier than Victorinox. Things looked promising for both companies, but they were both hit hard in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks. New airline rules outlined the use of pocket knives, which were common among passengers. Eventually, this took its toll on Wenger, and the company was saved from bankruptcy only when Victorinox purchased them. Eventually, Victorinox became the sole producer of the Swiss Army knife, while, com while both companies continued to produce watches under separate names. While the Wenger brand is known for as an entry-level watch, that's not to say that they haven't produced their share of quality watches. Their most famous high-level watch is the GST Classic, which was a mechanical watch powered by the famous Valjou 7750 27-joule movement. This watch retailed for over 10,000 US dollars. The watch is extremely rare and came in at every conceivable complication you could imagine, to include moon phase, day date, and month, second time zone, and chronograph. Wenger is truly an underrated brand, and I really cannot emphasize this enough. They produce watches that range from 100 in today's US dollars all the way to 2000 for their high-end watches. Most of the watches I will review from this company will be in the sub-500 range. For the price point, you absolutely get a substantial value, and this watch is no exception. So now you know the history, let's get down to my review. First thing I noticed about the watch when I looked at it is that it appeared different than what I initially expected. I'm not disappointed, certainly a very nice watch, but something just looked different. I later, I later compared the sales image to the actual watch and I realized that I was expecting more of a matte rose gold finish on the trim ring and the crown, as you can see in the image that hopefully is, is coming up. Again, I'm not disappointed, but that's just what I was expecting. 
The trim ring, Arabic numerals, hands and crown are all polished rose gold, and that's perfectly fine. So this watch falls under the Swiss military model of watches, which they're referring to as the classic executive line. There are several different variations of this model of watch, uh, but they all generally look similar and have some of the same features. Some have a sub-second, uh, others do not. This one has a GMT, uh, and that's why I selected this watch, because ultimately I thought that would be, be pretty neat to have. I, I, I like GMT. Um, so they all generally use the 500 series of round movements. I'm really a true believer that you should know what's in your watch, just like you should know what engine is in your car. So I'll discuss this movement in this short video and then I will take the watch out and we can start to go over its features. The Wenger Classic Executive GMT uses the 515H version of the Ronda Powertech Series 500 movement. The Ronda Powertech 500 series of calipers are affordable quartz movements. These watch movements are available with Swiss made and Swiss parts designations. 500 series is often found in affordable Swiss luxury timepieces, and there are many variations to the movement. So what are the differences? There are a total of eight different versions of the 500 series movements. The 513 includes your basic hours, minutes, and central seconds. The 513S is the same as the 513, but with improved power and hacking features as designated by an improved motor pulse. The 515 model is the same as the original 5, 513, but with the date at the 3 o'clock position. The 515S, like the 513S, is simply a revised version of the 515. The 515.24D is the same as the 515S, however the second hand is a sub-second at the 6 o'clock location. The 515.24H is also similar to the 515S, however it includes a separate 24-hour GMT hand and this is the version that this watch uses. Next, the 517 also uses the 515S uh, base movement, but with a day of the week wheel in addition to date. Finally, the 519 is based off the 517, but simply uses the extra wheel to create a larger double digit date indicator. There are two versions of this movement, the Swiss made and Swiss parts version. Both are nickel plated with one jewel. The Swiss parts version will typically be labeled as such, while the Swiss made version will typically state Swiss R9 or Swiss made. The 515H movement takes a 371 battery cell, which supports a powerful stepping motor. Battery life can be supported by up to 10 years with the hacking feature enabled, but will typically last for only two to three years when the crown is engaged. Quality of the movement is quite decent for the cost with a claimed accuracy of 10 to 20 seconds per month. All right, so let's get right into this. I've adjusted the camera so you can see the watch a little bit better. Uh, again, this is the uh, classic executive. So we've already talked about the case. This is kind of what, what Wenger ships out. Um, and this segment, of course, is where I just go off script and pretty much tell you what I think about the watch. So overall, I like it. Uh, I'm actually very pleased with it. Um, it's a GMT watch, which is, I believe, stands for Greenwich Mean Time. Um, but you can actually use, and, and, and that's the little red red arrow right there, you can typically use that for any time that you want, second time, uh, quite frankly. I use it for, you know, universal coordinated time, uh, but you can adjust it by, let's see, so that's the date to that way. So clockwise adjusts the date, so we'll set that to what it actually is, just since I'm here, say is the ninth. Very nice feel on this, um, and I think mean time or the co coordinated universal time is almost four o'clock. Nope, actually almost five o'clock, that's right. So if you don't know how this works, essentially it's it's as if you were to imagine instead of a second and a minute, uh, a minute and an hour hand, you had one hand that would span 24 hours. So in between one and two, of course, would be 1.30. Uh, quarter of the way past one would be uh, 1.15. And so that's typically how that works. And I'm gonna go ahead and just adjust, adjust the entire time. It's actually almost, almost noon, so. Yeah, this is a very nice watch. So right now, obviously you can tell hacking feature, right? You wanna save 
Want to save power when it's not in use, you pull it out all the way. Second hand stops, and as I explained earlier, this battery will last when new. Good battery, almost 10 years or two years when it's engaged. So there, I fully set it. This watch retailed uh, when new, the MSRP as they say, is uh, I believe it's $375, $325. It, it's a nice watch. Uh, I did not get it for that. You could see the case was actually quite dirty. I've since cleaned it. Let me see, you can't really tell now, but it was quite dirty. Uh, what I had was uh, old stock from uh, a watch seller. And I don't mind because uh, really, what do I care about the case, right? I got this watch for $54. Yeah, $54, I think is what I paid. Um, and it's typically normally retails. I mean, it says $325, but in the store, you can typically get this watch for, uh, I don't know, $180. Uh, it's it's very nice, very nice leather band. Um, Wenger usually has good bands. I, I don't like their, their newer... Uh, bracelets, which I've gone into detail before. The links are generally hollow, so I'm not happy, but they do put a little bit of effort. This is probably a Speedle, if I'm not sure if I'm, I had to guess. 20 millimeter, you can see genuine leather. First thing you notice is this very nice um, sort of brushed steel face with a gold accent uh, uh, numerals. I, I, I really like that, and of course I like the, the um, light and dark phase for the GMT hand. Um, this is really nice. Could be useful for somebody if they travel to two different time zones on a regular basis. The uh, polished trim ring looks very nice and it's a signed, signed crown. Um, so I opened this up earlier because I had to see what kind of movement it's in. There is a, a gasket on the stem as well as the back of the crown, so it's really nice. It helps maintain uh, water resistance. Just here, let's scratch it. Um, first thing you'll notice too is uh, this is one of, although this is a very nice watch, it's it's Wenger's um, inexpensive line of watches, which is to say that it's still a three hundred dollar watch, so it's it's very nice, but. This is a stamped case that's been, uh, I'm sorry, a stamped stamped uh, case back. When While it is screwing, it's stamped and it's been polished. Um, I would say this is probably not laser etched so much as it is how you, you normally use the, as, the acid process. It's all stainless steel, polished stainless steel case. Actually very nice, I really like it. Good quality as always. The crystal is a three layer mineral crystal with uh, three layers of sapphire in it to help present, uh, prevent against uh, scratches. So really nice. There's another O-ring gasket in here. It's a hundred meter water resistant. So you, you really could go snorkeling with it. Some basic snorkeling, you go to the beach. I wouldn't really recommend it because this is not a waterproof uh, uh, strap, but you will never run into a situation where you're in a, a big storm or fall into a pool at a party. <laughs> and uh, your watch goes bad. So I don't recommend wearing it, but I mean, if you felt the need to, you could shower with it, but you definitely wouldn't want to wear this strap. Um, other than that, there's there's not much really to talk about this watch. It's very nice. Um, I, I'm very happy with it. I've got a couple more coming in, so I'll be reviewing those later. So if you like this video, please make sure you um, subscribe and leave a comment below. Oh, and I almost forgot. I got to do loom shot. So we'll do that. I'll turn off the lights and then we'll see how that works. And yes, this is a, a UV light. There you go. So, well, it's our hands behind the, the minute hand, but not bad. And you also get the GMT. So, all right. Any other questions, uh, leave a comment below and please be sure to subscribe. Thank you.